Hi, let's continue our discussion on the number of balls on the full has been. In the previous segment, uh, this is the question. Okay, we would like to uh, compute the probability that bin one gets exactly k balls. Okay, and this is uh, if you recall, before we just do the computation, this is exactly uh, the uh, y is the binomial random variables. So we, we can just, uh, if we, we have already compute the expected value of this and the, the probability distribution of this binomial random variables, then we're done, right? But let's try to do that one more time here. Okay, uh, so uh, bin, bin 1, right? And there are n balls. Okay. And we can think of this as uh, each ball pick uh, bin 1 with probability 1 over n, right? So if you want to get exactly k balls, then think if you think about this, then there are uh, n choose k possible outcomes, right? So out of n, bo out of n balls here, k must pick bin 1, right? So, um, so if you think about this, uh, there are uh, n choose k possible outcome. Okay, and then for each outcome, what is the probability of each outcome? Um, uh, ex you have already picked uh, k balls that would, for each outcome, right, you have already picked k balls that would fall into bin, bin 1. Okay, and those k balls must pick bin 1, right? So out of, out of n choices, it has to pick just one choice. So is this one over n for one for each of the ball that you pick? And they pick uh, each of this ball uh, pick a bin with randomly, independently. So the probability is this. And then the other balls, okay, has to pick some some other bins, right? So. It cannot pick uh, bin bin one, so it has occur with this probabilities, and the number of other balls is n minus k, right? And you think about this for each. This is the probability that each outcome would occur, right? Whatever outcome you pick, k guys, and these k guys, like you pick this one, this one, and that one, that one. This is one outcome, and the probability is this. Okay. Uh, and they are all equal for for all the outcomes. So if you sum them up, and each outcome are you know mutually independent, uh, mutually exclusive. So from the axiom of probability, you can sum them up, and there are n choose k guy outcomes. So you can multiply it. So this is the probability. So let, let let's me write it again. So this is the probability that bin one get exactly k balls. So it's n choose k times. 1 over n to the k times 1 minus 1 over n to the n minus k. All right. Now, um, we want to say that uh, some bad event, okay? So some bad event, which is like uh, bin 1 or some bin get at least, get more than, get at least k balls. So we want to use k as the the upper bound that we can guarantee that no bin would would no bins would get uh, more than k or at least k balls. So uh, the probability that we have just computed are at the boundary, right? But we want to find the probability that it gets at least k. So you have to take care of some th some value more than k, right? So how are we going to do that? So if uh, if you think about this. Then uh, there are the case where you get ex at exactly k, right? So at least k means uh, you get k, or you get k plus 1, or you get k plus 2, and so on up to n balls, right? And each of these, okay, are again mutually exclusive, okay? So if you compute the probability of this event, this event, that, and everything, 
you can add them up right to to get the probability that some of this would occur right because they are mutually exclusive so you can uh, the union of their the probability of the union of the events are just the sum of the probability of the events okay so you can just uh, add them up so the way we're gonna do is to 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 sum them up okay so we sum let i start from k to n and then we compute the probability that y is exactly i okay so if you plug in what we had we're gonna get uh, the sum from i equals k to n of you know you have n guys you pick i right and all of these i guys must pick the first bin okay so it's one over n to the i and the rest okay must pick someone else n minus i right so this is this this term okay right and then we would like to bound this this probability okay um however it's kind of hard because you have you know you have this uh the thing that make everything uh a little bit hard is this term okay and also this term is kind of like uh some obstacle as well but but recall that we want to find the upper bound right so um um we can just ignore this and 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 say it's it is at most one right but the 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 really problematic guys is this okay um okay there's a useful fact that you can uh use it is this okay so we know that n choose k is okay at most e times n to the k over k e times n over k to the k right or it is at least this okay so the the main difference is this e term here okay so if you want the upper bound we can use this if you want the lower bound we can use this okay okay so with this fact we can put it in the uh, expression that we already had right let's do some calculation here so let's try to uh, simplify things a little bit so this is at most one and as n gets large this is getting close to one right so we can uh, what we do we just say okay so this term is at most one okay so um, what we get here is this just ignore this and say it's one so this term is at most uh, so I, I just kick out this term so it's n choose i 1 over n to the i okay now uh, you cannot deal with this pretty easily unless you use the previous fact okay so we want the upper bound side so we want something that is larger or at least as uh, should be at least this okay so it's uh, we use the the right hand term right so I'm gonna say that this is uh, okay so it's at most uh, e n choose i okay to the i then this is one over n to the i okay now um the term is kind of nice but then uh you can see that this n okay and this n we cancel out okay but then the term this term i is kind of like still mess mess up with us right so let me do one other Simplif simplification so you can see that i is at at least k right and as long as uh if you look at the sum i always increases right um so we can say that uh we can take uh the upper bound so if k is uh larger okay if k is larger this term is get get smaller right Okay, so we can say that we can say this. We can say that this is at most. So let's take the let's fix i to be the smallest value, right? So 
so this is sums I don't want to, from k to the n. So this is going to be e n to the k raised to the power of i. This is one over n raised to the power of i. So we take i to be the its uh, smallest value here. So if if it's get larger, then this term gets smaller, right? So we just take the lower bound of i. So we can say that uh, this is at most this. Okay. Now it's time to do some calculation. Okay. So this is equal to uh, i equals k to the n. And uh, if you do some calculation, then n would cross out, right? So you're gonna get e to the k to the i. Let's uh, let's pull e to the k, e over k to the k out. Okay. And what is left is this this term. Um, so if we, I take away uh, e to the k, so this will be i. We'll start from zero to n minus k. Right. So uh, I factor this out. So this get e to the k to the i. Okay, it's the same thing. I just uh, divide this by e to e over k to the k, and then uh, I change the uh, index i here. Okay. Now, if we let uh, so let's try to get the exact formula first. So it's e to the k, e over k to the k, right? And if k is larger than e, k will be we use k to be some large, uh, not some non uh, some some value which is non constant. So you get larger than e, right? So this is the uh, geometric sum. Okay, so we will review that later on. We can say that uh, this is at most uh, this sum. Because it's a geometric, uh, geometric series. Okay, so we get to this. And if k is large, okay, we'll do some more... Uh, uh, approximation here and this is wrong okay uh, but but it's we'll just get we, we'll try to get the approximate so this is if k is large if you think about this if k is larger than uh, 2e maybe 10 or something like that this would be a uh, 1 minus something less than uh, 1 over 2 okay so this is at most 2 right but if k gets large this you get uh, closer and smaller and smaller and you get close to 1 right so we're gonna say that Okay, so we're gonna say that in later analysis, we're gonna say that this is approximately e to the k. Okay, we're gonna use this. Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's have a side uh, note here quickly about the geometric sum. Okay, if you recall that it's this term, like you probably have seen this. 1 over 8, and so on. This is one example of the geometric uh, series. Okay, you take uh, each value is, is the uh, is in this form a to 3, 0 plus a to the 1 plus a to the 2 plus something, and so on. Okay, and this is if a is larger than 1, then uh, uh, it will get really large, it goes to an infinity. But if a is smaller, than one strictly smaller than one, this will go to uh, converge to one. Uh, one minus a. Okay, um, so we're gonna use this fact here. Okay, we use this fact here. So this is geometric uh, geometric uh, series, and we'll see that uh, again pretty soon. Okay, so this is a side note. Okay, finally, we have that uh, it is approximately this. Okay, we lie, and because we just kill this term, and this term is larger than 1. Okay, but we just say it's 1 for now. Okay, so now uh, we analyze that uh, the probability that just been 1 to have at least k ball is this e over k to the k. Okay, approximately this. So our goal is to have a guarantee that actually there's no bad events occur so what does it mean to uh, a bad events okay so we, we want to say something like uh, 
bad thing is small. Okay, we want to we want to say this, and when we say that this is is small, is that this is at most something, some some value epsilon. Okay, something small. Okay, but but our bad thing here is like it means like some some ball uh, some bin has high load, but uh, what we have here is for a particular bin has a high load, right? So um, what it means that uh, the bad thing that we have here is like uh, it's gonna look like uh, uh, no bin is bad, right? But what we have here is like the probability that yeah, at most probably bin uh, bin one is bad. is bad okay so uh, the question of this segment is that uh, what can you do about it okay so we have the bar on the bin just one bin but we want the bad the probability of the bad bad event bad event will be we include any bins okay so what can we uh, how, how can we gonna use this to argue the, that that's no bad thing so I'll let you uh, think about it and, and we'll, we'll discuss it uh, in the next segment.